Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today's afterlife celebrity that we will be chatting with is Amelia Earhart. Ah, cool, isn't she? Oh, yes. Now I recognize sometimes historical figures are not always the first thing we think about when we think about celebrities. However, what an incredible, incredibly inspiring woman, Amelia Earhart. Now, as a pilot and as a trailblazer, I welcome the energy of Amelia Earhart. Come on in, Amelia. Wow, you're taller than I thought you would be, I have to say. Yeah, and her hair's a little more wavy or curly than I thought it would be. It's a little on the reddish side, but not maybe, maybe sandy blondish water no no darker than that like a light brown but little auburny a little bit of red in there it looks like yeah um so amelia i i know we learned about you in school i know you're a pilot but i would love for you to talk to us about some inspirational stuff all right but before we get into the inspirational stuff i know that the viewers are going to want to know some stuff about the mystery surrounding your death now, we all agree here at Above Life Channel that we do not define life by the moment of death. And yet at the same time, the mystery that surrounds your passing or transition is something that is hard to let go of. And so it will be, it will be helpful in some, in some ways for us to understand what it was like for you. So as you're making your flight, across the ocean and your plane went missing. Can you talk to us a little bit about what that experience was like for you? And, you know, were you scared? Did you know the plane was going down? I mean, what kind of circumstances were you dealing with? She's showing me heavy rain, like on the, the windshield of the, the plane. And there was disruption in like the wind somehow too. I don't know if it was actually a storm, but she's saying that there were other factors that influenced the plane going down. And she said they actually have found pieces of the plane. They actually have found some remnants of the fuselage and parts of the plane. And she said, it's something that, and she's showing me like Paris. I don't know why she's showing me Paris. And she's showing me um, Lindbergh. She's referring to Lindbergh, Charles Lindbergh, his flight. And she's showing me Paris and she's showing me like something where she stopped to refuel someplace and took off. And then, so it wasn't in the beginning of the journey. It was part way. It was like three fourths of the way through. It looks like, um, she's saying I was at home in the sky and I recognize that there are things beyond your control. And this is, the part that you should listen to. <laughs> there are things that are beyond your control. We cannot control everything. We cannot control the weather. But we can plan and we could be prepared. And I was. I felt prepared. I felt ready. And she's saying something about her father's blessing or having her father with her in spirit. I don't know if her father was dead before she flew. Or if she's talking about her dad and his energy or his spirit or his, that he is a contributor to her ability to give it all she has. So when you're faced with difficult circumstances that are beyond your control, and no matter how much training you've had, you're forced to rely upon something far greater than yourself. And it doesn't always end the way you hoped it would. So you crashed into the water. Is that right? Yes. He said, and just over the mountains, she says, I could see, or I knew there was land not far away. It's not like she was in the middle of the ocean, you guys. It doesn't look like that. And she said, I could see mountains. And, and then a clearing. And are you showing me the transition point? Yes. So after the plane crash and she left her body, she's showing me the transition point. All of a sudden it's like the plane starts climbing again 
and there's a clearing and she can see the mountains in the distance and it's a beautiful blue sky day and it's crisp and clear and gorgeous and the kind of day that you would dream of when you're flying. A little more sunny than you might like, she says, because of reflection off the metal, but just beautiful and you just feel so free, just completely free. Is that what you enjoyed about flying, Amelia? I think I liked, I think I appreciated flying because of the, that sense of, uh, of accomplishment, of knowing that you have everything you need to accomplish that task, to accomplish that flight. And there is, it's not as much of a rush when you take off as just before you land, then you, there's a, a moment of reflection and appreciation for being able to be up in the sky and be lost in the sky. And then when you come back down, then you're back again with everyone else, doing everything else. And up there, there's no, there's no rules or barriers in, in the way that we, we perceive ourselves in the way that we we fit into society in the way that we decide to show up in the world there's nothing like that in the sky it's just completely vast space it's uncharted in many ways that's the part that i i enjoyed the most was the the she showed me like the legs of the journey the parts of it each part has a place, each component plays a role in the overall achievement of the flight, the success of it. And that, that's something that hard, that's difficult to put into words. But it's important to know that there were other pilots, not just me, that were women, that were very skilled pilots that didn't get the recognition that I did. And the fact that I crashed, that my plane did not make it, did not help them. That's the one thing that I, if I were to have a regret, it would be that. I know, I know that you would say that I inspired many young women and girls. Yes, even today you do, even today. For me, There's a part of me that knows that I let them down by not being able to fulfill the mission for all of us. Perhaps I held them back because of my daring, but it was very planful. It wasn't risky. It wasn't rebellious in my nature that created the need or the desire to achieve this accomplishment it was the fact that I knew I had the skills and the strength to see it through. And in many ways I did. So there is a lot of mystery around your death and, and there's even conspiracy theories about it too. I'm sure you know. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm aware. She says, I'm aware. So, Amelia, are you reincarnated? Yes. She says, yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Or I have been. Let me say that. I have been. Okay, so did you incarnate and then leave and incarnate again? Perhaps. She says, perhaps. Yeah, I kind of feel like it's not like our business to know that necessarily, but so she has been reincarnated, just so you guys know. As a pilot, no. She says, no, not as a pilot, no, no. Yeah, there's a connection with her dad, you guys. I don't know if he inspired her. I don't know if he like died before she did this. I don't know what the deal is, but the dad is an inspiration for Amelia Earhart. If you know, put that in the comments below. If you know the relationship Amelia Earhart had with her father, that'd be interesting to know. Okay, so I know some of you have read her probably biographies and that kind of thing. All right. Hmm. 
it's cool to be with you. <laughs> you feel sure of yourself, but you don't feel conceited at all. You just feel very confident and the skills and abilities that you have, you trust your instincts, you trust your strengths, and that's, I respect that. As a woman, I total and complete respect for that. You're very intellectual, I can feel that. Your mind is solid, you make good choices, and your judgment is superb. So your death just really seems like an un, unintended circumstances kind of coming together at once and just not providing an opportunity for you to be able to, to reach that destination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow, fascinating, fascinating. So what kinds of inspiration would you like to share with us? What kind of, of advice would you give young women today whether they're pilots or just in general life advice. And oh, okay, so the reincarnation, she wants to talk about that. Okay, so reincarnation. All right, go ahead, go ahead. I'm happy to, to channel whatever it is you want to share, Amelia Earhart. It's not as difficult as you might think to reincarnate, to come back and be a person again. And you do have a choice. There's different levels that you can step into. So you can be an animal if you choose to do that, for example. It's not as difficult as you think it might be. And letting go of your experience in your life is perhaps one of the biggest obstacles to stepping into a new one. And so some of you would talk about that as incarnation, reincarnation, or maybe karma, or uh, past lives. And to answer a very obvious question, I did not recall my past life as Amelia. So if you had met me, I wouldn't have known that that's who I was, and neither would you. And that's how it's intended to be. That's the way it's supposed to be. But it's not like a witness protection program or anything like that. It's not, it's not really that um, interesting, actually. It's much more basic than you think. It's a much more easy, um, easier than you think because you don't have the logical mind when you're in the spirit form. When you're in the afterlife, you release and let go of the ego. You transcend that and you move into a place where you're able to see more clearly and reflect upon your human life experiences if you choose to do that. As a spirit, many have that choice to choose to do that. And you can do that. And she's showing me because I'm asking her. She's talking, I'm asking her. So did you have the choice to do that during your life review, like right upon your death or right after you got into the afterlife? Like, did you have to fill out a questionnaire? What would you like to experience here? <laughs> what was it like? It is a mutually agreed upon as like a conversation that your soul has with the highest parts of who you are, what some refer to as the God sense or God center. First, you must reunite and reemerge as a pure, pure, oh, she sh like I can feel the energy of it and it's hard to use the words, as a true aspect of light closest, you guys, closest way I can describe what she's making me feel here. And once everything is clear, then you can step back in and choose to embark on a new adventure, a new journey. And you become an, a person or perhaps an animal again. So you didn't remember your past life? No. We all have amnesia with that. So do you recommend that we try to remember our past lives or know if we were reincarnated? There are hints, there are things that will be familiar to you or seem familiar to you. When I, when I first um, boarded a plane, I got to fly a commercial jet, fly in one, and the experience was so phenomenal. And I just felt like I was a kid in a candy store or a kid at Christmas. I felt so excited about it. And so uh, you would think maybe I would make that connection, but not exactly like that. But so there are things, there are clues 
to past and to things that are familiar with you and to things that are not or that you have a very strong response or reaction to. Those are clues and things, but somebody to help guide you as you stay focused on this that you're seeing in front of you now here today. That's what is real in the moment. Hmm. You know, I have a lot of thoughts and feelings about past lives and reincarnation, Amelia. So that's interesting that you say that. That really, that really is interesting that you, sh you share that. So, so you're not going to tell us who you are or who you've been? No. No. There are mysteries of life and that's what makes, um, that's what makes it enjoyable, she says. Yeah. Interesting. Good choice of words. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. All right, so do you have any advice about life? One of the things that I would suggest, if you really want to achieve your dreams, if there are things that you're passionate about, don't wait. Don't wait to pursue them. And don't let things like your age or silly things like your location stop you from pursuing those things. And learn about them. Go to the library and get books and read. Read on your own. You don't have to take a class or and get a particular training or certification. Some of these things are natural within you. So if you can learn through books, just absorb that and make the most of the opportunities you're given. And the things that you enjoy doing, those dreams that you have and those things that you really want to do, those deep cravings, those are really important. Pay attention to that. Pay attention. Pay attention to that. Those are our intended to help you, to help you navigate your path in your life that you're in right now. It's important for you to recognize that it's like a compass for you. It's a tool for you. Thank you, Amelia. Wow, awesome. <laughs> Great conversation, thank you. And thank you. I'm Bridget, and it's my pleasure to have channeled this conversation with Amelia Earhart in the afterlife. You have been watching Above Life Channel, where our purpose is to inspire your spirit to fill you with hope, because this is your life. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>